Now, let's uh, add more detail to that first office space that we started with when we began our project. Here we have the green transparent area. Um, let's reshape that a little bit. Instead of a rectangular area, maybe give this a little more of a curved or more of an organic type shape to it. Uh, we'll give it a solid opaque color and using the patch tool, what we're going to do is click on the object and now instead of a simple rectangular box, uh, we get uh, a patch object which is actually taking that object and giving us a series of controls that we can use to further edit that object. And almost any object can be converted into a patch object and now you can see that rectangular box is more of a flexible type of a 3D form that we can push and pull to modify that shape. Now let's undo back one step and I'm going, I'm going to unstitch just the front face. So I'll actually separate that front face. So now we have two objects there. We have the box which is in the back and the face which is in the front. So I'm going to edit the control parameters of just the front face only so we can modify that and have that not affect the rest of the 3D space. So we put the curve up on top and I'll grab the controls on the bottom and maybe put a little curvature to the front of the wall right there. Now that is a separate object, it's a separate surface, and we can see that if I were to move that away from the rest of the volume, you can see we would actually uh, have two different objects there. Now let's get rid of the front facade and maybe zoom into our internal space here. And what I'd like to do is use the parallel tool, give it a wall and slab offset thickness. We can set any values that we want, have different values for the floors and different values for the walls. And now we converted that into a 3D object. Now to create the floors, I want the floors, the slabs, to match the existing inside of that space. So using the derivative tool, I'll simply extrude the face up to create a 3D floor which matches. And then I can take that object and move that so it matches with the floor in the other area. And then I can make multiple copies of that. Let's uh, make three copies of that. It'll evenly space that for me. And now we can have all the floors match with the other space that we worked on earlier. Now I'll take that space and all the floors that I created and I'll do a Boolean union to union all those pieces together into one single solid object. Now there's other ways of creating the front facade. What we can do is create a series of curves. You can create two, three, or four curves which represent the outside boundary of the intended shape that you want. So you can see here there are four different curves. We simply move those into position and Form Z will then fit a NURBS surface inside the boundary of all those curves. And we end up with a complex shape that looks like that. And Form Z automatically interpolates the center for us. Now, a second way of doing this is we can create the outside curves, but also add additional curves into the center area to sort of tell Form Z how we want the middle of that surface to be interpolated. Now we'll just grab all those curves and Form Z just magically figures out how to fit a nice smooth NURBS surface through all those wires that you have. Now because this is a NURBS object, we can edit the controls, we can increase or decrease the amount of controls. For example, uh, I can type in 6 by 6 So now you can see that uh, we can uh, have a different set of controls to enhance how we edit that 3D form after it is created. So now um, I can take these controls and maybe take this control and move that up a little bit to create the curvature on top. Uh, I can also edit the surface directly uh, by just grabbing the surface pretty much anywhere that I want and pushing and pulling on that object to reshape that. So I can sculpt it uh, in relationship to the surrounding 3D forms and the surrounding buildings that I have there. Now to have the floors match with the front facade, the new facade that we just created, once again we can use our trim tool and actually use that front facade as a trimming or a cutting object that can cut through other objects so now all the floors match perfectly uh, with that front facade of that building. Now Form Z does have a 2D drafting module, uh, so you can actually define any elevational height and Form Z will then create a 2D cross section and that 2D cross section uh, can be put into the 2D drafting window of Form Z so you can add dimensions and hatch patterns and any standard drafting elements that you want uh, for your documentation or you can export that out using some of the many different export formats and when you bring that 2D drafting file back in you can bring it back into the modeling window 
use the stair tool to recreate stairs from the center line and take those 2D drafting elements and work with those inside of the 3D modeling environment just as easily uh, as you did the 3D objects. Now at this point, uh, here's the rest of the different spaces uh, with more detail added to that using all the techniques that we've uh, shown up to this point here. Uh, for example, the actual windows themselves, uh, those are just symbols. Uh, forms you support symbols, so very uh, common elements that you use over and over. You can save that as a symbol element. Uh, it's also used uh, to be able to easily replace the windows too, so you can easily go back and globally change any of the symbols that are placed into the object. So here we have a symbol library file, and we can just simply place it by snapping right to the endpoint of the inside of the opening that we have to place those windows, and that's how the other windows were placed uh, throughout the rest of our building.